Hi, I'm Dr. Rothman. Uh, welcome to Medical Marijuana Experts at DocMJ. Uh, today's question is, uh, how does uh, cannabis, medical cannabis, uh, relate to schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a, a mental condition uh, that is largely genetic, uh, that can be very debilitating. Uh, it can involve uh, hallucinations. Uh, it can involve uh, other mental issues. Schizophrenia uh, is possibly treated medically uh, in two out of three cases, uh, but in one out of three uh, cannot be treated medically. It can uh, lead to debilitation uh, to the point where a patient cannot function. Uh, how does cannabis relate to schizophrenia? Well, the THC in cannabis is probably not good for schizophrenia. Uh, THC alone in high doses can cause schizophrenic symptoms in normal patients. In patients with schizophrenia, the THC uh, can make it worse, can bring it on. However, the CBD, which is the uh, second component of uh, cannabis, uh, has been uh, successfully used uh, to manage schizophrenia in many cases uh, and is recommended uh, for that purpose. In terms of uh, the research done, there is no direct cause and effect of THC uh, causing schizophrenia, but people uh, with schizophrenia uh, have gotten worse uh, with THC only. Uh, the CBD, however, uh, has been used to treat the schizophrenia. Uh, so the take home is this, if I have a patient who comes in, I will always ask, no matter what the concern is that the patient has, whether he has a history of schizophrenia. If he does, he will not get THC cannabis, he will get CBD cannabis. I will ask the patient if there is a family history uh, of schizophrenia, and if there is, uh, either in a parent or a sibling, uh, he will not get THC cannabis, he will only get CBD cannabis. Um, now, I should mention this, in the year and a half that I've been doing cannabis medicine, I have had two patients come in uh, for revisits. Their initial visits were with other physicians who had placed them on THC cannabis. And these patients had actually done quite well with the THC cannabis. One was a 25-year-old who was having um, auditory uh, hallucinations. He was, he was hearing things. Uh, he came in with his parent um, and he stated, I'm so much better. Uh, however, I felt my hands were tied based on the, uh, the current knowledge and I was not able to give him a continuing recommendation for THC. He was very disappointed, as was the other patient who had been on THC. And I hope in the future there'll be more research done uh, so that we can take care of these patients better. I uh, treat the patient as a normal, regular patient. Uh, the patient has already filled out a history and physical and a complaint list um, and has documented the severity of the complaints. I will review this with the patient. Um, I will, based on, on the findings on the history, uh, I will do a physical exam that, that addresses the issues. For instance, if the patient uh, has low back pain, I will uh, examine for straight leg raising to see if there's uh, uh, any spinal cord problems. I will examine the muscles of the back to see if there's any spasm or tenderness. Um, if the patient um, uh, complains that uh, he's uh, had bad knees or uh, uh, bad uh, hands, I will examine for evidence uh, of arthritis. If the patient says that, well, I, I've had uh, surgeries in the past, I'll look for the scars. Um, I will always go to eForce, which is a website uh, run by the state uh, that has a listing of all the patient's narcotics that he's been prescribed throughout the pharmacies of Florida. So if a patient tells me he's had no care and no drugs, and I go to that site and he's full of drugs on that site, then I know there's a problem. Um, at the end of that evaluation, uh, I can make my own determination uh, whether this patient merits a uh, recommendation uh, based on the story and the physical findings. If I'm not comfortable with that, then I can ask the patient to see a primary care physician, uh, and um, I would then review those records once they're available. If the patient has um, a mental issue, such as anxiety, 
and I'm uncomfortable with my evaluation, I will ask him to have a mental evaluation, which could be done by a primary care, but could also be done uh, by uh, any uh, county health department uh, mental health unit. Uh, and then I would evaluate that as well. Uh, so at the end of the day, um, I will evaluate the patient, um, decide whether to recommend right then, uh, and I have the option um, to send the patient for further evaluation. Now the corollary to this is the patient uh, who may not um, uh, have the records uh, handy at the time of the visit and I will treat the patient the same way and at the end of the evaluation if I'm comfortable recommending the patient I will and if not I will wait for those records to come. Uh, so that's what we do with patients without medical records. For more information, visit our website at docmj.com and subscribe below to follow our channel.